So on to HTML5. So we talked about this increasingly complex and fragmented world of digital consumption, really benefiting from the simplification that the use of an open standard like HTML5 can provide. So HTML5, um, which by the way just celebrated its one year anniversary, um, was originally devised to help standardize website creation. But in this latest iteration, um, it really went beyond consumption of content and advertising on the web to also include mobile devices and tablets. Um, there were also some major functional updates around the use of graphics, audio, video, interactive documents, all the things that are very germane to digital advertising. And on this one year anniversary of the W3C declaring that HTML5 standard complete, we at Adobe understand that the open web represents the future of web connectivity and digital advertising. And while we have an, an obligation to maintain the compatibility of existing content developed with Adobe Technologies, Flash, um, we are very invested in the web platforms and the authoring tools that help accelerate the transition to HTML5 and open standards in advertising and, and advertising technology. The, let's talk about the promise of HTML5 and what it provides. So, from a developer's perspective, from a technologist's perspective, the promise of HTML5 really is about code once, deploy everywhere, right? This applies to content as well as ad creative, whether it's display or rich media or video ads, all can be built in HTML5 and deployed for rendering in any environment, um, or at least that's the, the idea. And this concept is more relevant than ever as device fragmentation increases ever more. And I think we all are experiencing that in our businesses, right? Um, from a consumer perspective, the benefits of, of HTML5 really are twofold. One is around helping to mitigate the threat of malware and viruses and the nasty stuff that oftentimes plugins, any plugin, can provide. The second is around making the user experience simpler and consistent because you can deliver that experience across any device more easily without having to install a plugin. So let's talk a moment about the reality of where HTML5 is today and what's going on. So the, the reality of HTML5 in advertising today is, is an evolving story. And there's a couple of things that still need to be addressed in order to be able to take full advantage of what HTML5 will provide for us in the future. One of those is around the issue of reach. Um, currently today, HTML5 supports around 80% of web browsers that are, um, that are in market. WebGL, which is the technology that is used for 3D rendering, is around, has about 50% browser uh, penetration. And so um, relying solely on HTML5 is not necessarily going to get you full delivery today, but it's headed in that direction. The second issue around HTML5 or where HTML5 is today is around user experience. In the debate around HTML5 versus no native mobile apps, the industry seems to be moving in the direction of native first um, because they pro that provides a superior user experience and superior performance. And I think we've all heard about you know, the, you know, the, um, the, the input from folks like Facebook in terms of the right phase in terms of which to go after HTML5 going too early versus where it is today. Um, the third issue, um, and one near and dear to my heart, is how premium video is supported. So in the instance of Chrome and Microsoft browsers today, um, they differ significantly in how they handle content encryption and adaptive streaming. Um, additionally, vPaid ads typically bundle together all the sidecar um, and JavaScript files for ease of delivery and trafficking. Um, but HTML5 treats all those files as individual assets, treats them separately, right? So this can confuse a video player and can cause buffering or crashes uh, upon playback. So that is, that is a challenge in the current environment. If we think about how do we bridge from where HTML5 is today to where we want to take it, um, there's a couple recommendations that we have at Adobe and the things that we're thinking about. Um, one is, um, Developers are encouraged to institute fallback uh, mechanisms for legacy platforms. So until HTML5 adoption is at a, at a greater percentage, um, one such approach is recommended by the IAB, which is the output of creative in at least three different file formats, um, including MP4, H.264, uh, Theora, Vorbis, WebM, VP8. Um, and so 
that's one approach is to multiply the number of files that, that you output. The second is um, approach for output to the most common format, which is MP4, and then for packaging and trafficking that into the ad server. Um, and then use a concept that we call just-in-time creative repackaging, which is in its early days, but can transcode the ad so that with um, no, perceptible, uh, no perceptible disruption to the user, um, you, a different ad can be displayed in real time. Um, the ad server returns a standard response, and if the format isn't supported, the creative repackaging service can transcode it back for playback. And so that's one recommendation we have for how to approach this issue today. That same fallback option also exists for display and rich media, um, which is in a DSP or in an ad server um, to serve a static backup image when served in an unsupported environment. In a bidded environment, we're thinking about things where you can automatically adjust a bid lower if you have to serve that static image. Um, in the bidder, an advertiser could set, set an offer price um, based on delivery against a set campaign and audience objective. And if that static image has to be served instead, then you can adjust the price accordingly. And so we see this as another bridging option as advertisers and agencies get more comfortable and adept with HTML5. Whichever fallback approach you take, it's hard to overstate the importance of cross-device optimization. HTML5 browser implementations tend, all tend to be slightly different. And it's not just desktop, but also mobile browsers. And so through, um, through thorough testing and using a proper publishing kit, um, it takes into consideration these things. That's very important. Um, the issue of user experience, which is the last element, really isn't as big of an obstacle um, for advertisers. Facebook, for example, provides a very complex and powerful mobile application. The more substantial an application is, the greater potential for performance issues when rendering HTML5 for mobile web. Um, however, even in the richest, most interactive ad creative is an order of magnitude simpler than just a typical mobile application. So ad creative can be developed in HTML5 for display or playback within a native app, and that seems to be the direction that the industry is moving in. Um, and additionally, to, to address the shortcomings of HTML5 for video advertising, um, the vast 4.0 spec, which is in development, we believe will provide a standardized way to bundle video, sidecar, manifest, and JavaScript files into a single file. Um, and that really should help to ease trafficking and playback concerns when it comes to HTML5.